First of all, um, I apologize for the, my presentation. I've been here a lot less time than the guys before me, so it'll focus a little bit more on previous work as well as my own results. So what I'm working on is trivial inch loading and its impact on loading and performance of a tidal turbine. Uh, there hasn't been that much research into turbulence because, as we've heard today, uh, most of the research were, is inherited from the wind industry, and turbulence really isn't that big of a concern in the wind industry. Wind industry has around 2%, 3% turbulence, while we're dealing with around 12 to 20%, depending on the site. So problem statement. What are the main problems I'm trying to go at? As we've seen, as we all know, we're all fluids people here. We know that there's a lot of development going on in the Pentland Firth for tidal stream power. And we really need to understand all of the physical effects that are going on in a turbine, as all of the, my previous colleagues have mentioned. Uh, so we really need to emphasis also a site-by-site -site characterization of what's going on. There's different blockage. There's different uh, coefficients. There's, it's all very site-by-site. -site. We also have to look at, as I said before, what my, most of my research focuses on is there are turbulent structures that arise in these sites, be it from a tidal current, be it from a wave current, or really how they interact. And finally, this interaction, how does it really affect the loading on the tidal turbine? How does it affect its performance, its power, its fatigue, etc.? So I divided this up in three major points, at least on what I've done so far which is turbulence characterization. How do I describe turbulence? What are the main parameters that tell me what turbulence is? Uh, how do I use this information to create a realistic model? How do I simplify it, et cetera? Then the influence of waves and currents on the turbulence. How much is waves? How much is current? Does this depend on the site? Does this change over time? We're talking about unsteady phenomena that go on for a variety of length scales. And turbulence loading and performance. So after we finally figured out what's the turbulence, how much one contributes from wave, how much one contributes from current, well, how does this really affect the actual device that we're putting in? How is it going to affect the survivability? All of these are really important questions we know, we have to know before we actually design and test our devices. So this is the past work that has been done. I'm focusing mostly on studies by Blackmore and my check. Uh, where's the? Ah, here we go. So, ah, there we go. So first, we um, I'm trying to focus a lot on these sort of turbulent profiles on what happens at different turbulent uh, length scales and intensities when you're looking at just through a tidal channel. Uh, Blackmore really helped me understand how these can grow under different sort of varieties. This is all done in a flume, but it's helped me to compare with uh, CFD results and other experimentals. I'm using the 63418 NACA profile used by MyCheck and other different projects. Uh, it sort of gives you a lot of area to validate and to compare your own results. And finally, the effects of turbulence on the wake. There has been very little sort of parametric um, analysis into Turbulence, like I said, you have to characterize it. You have to describe what are the parameters that really matter. So this is one of the few things that have really helped me understand the importance of length scales or the importance of uh, intensities that go on and how it affects the wake and the performance. But it also really highlights how different models can be affected in different ways by it. And you really have to, your simplifications really do matter. So for my research stage, right now I'm focusing on the first two, uh, on the first two, which is a steady analysis of hydro of an airfoil. Basically, I'm just putting an airfoil in the CFD and trying to get really how it's being affected by the length scales, by the intensity. But it's more of a proof of concept because after that, I'm going to go into what I'm doing right now is a 3D analysis of the entire blade. You have to break it down into the different phenomena that are going on. You have an unsteady, you have steady phenomena. Then you have to see the rotational effects. If you sort of break down into different components, different stages, you can really get a better picture of what's going on. Finally, I'm going to end up with an unsteady analysis because that's when the real fun begins and at the very last, create a full model for the full device. 
So this, these are my first results that I've gotten. I first tried using a program called QBlade that is mainly for the wind industry that creates a full turbulent field. Uh, I've used this field and tried to use it in CFD. And honestly, it's, they're not the best results, but it really does give you an insight into what are the main phenomena that you should be looking for if you want to expand uh, your research. And the main thing that interested me was the separation around an airfoil and how this separation evolves with turbulence. Does it uh, normally, in the theory, we see that turbulence, the difference between laminar and turbulent flow, and consequently higher turbulence in a flow makes your separation point just go move to the right of your airfoil. And I saw this sort of phenomena as well during the simulation. This is a steady case, and as you can see at high, this is around 15% turbulence, you almost have no separation. But this separation really is what drives most of the performance in the airfoil. It drives drag, it drives lift. Lift is mostly uh, coming from a pressure gradient, and drag is mostly coming from a shear stress on the surface of the airfoil. So any sort of simulation, any sort of model, really has to account for an accurate prediction of the separation point or the non-separation. Ah, like I said, you really have to look at the separation point, and I put this through some of, the, of other numerical models like Java foil, or it's like to sort of get an understanding of where does separation occur. And just before around six degree angle of attack, you get absolutely no separation. After this, you get this really big drop at from 628. This is when most models, most CFD models, most numerical models, get it really wrong. You start getting unpredictable to a point where it's not really realistic. After this, the second, ah, where is it? Well, after eight degrees, um, you start seeing separation, I mean, um, dynamic stall. So that can be even more uncertain. But most of our operating points are from zero to 10 degrees. So that six to eight region is really important. Now, this has been a research question that I've been sort of having trouble with, which is most of the literature deals with Reynolds numbers to describe it, to describe turbulence, which I think that may not be a complete picture of how to describe it. There's uh, the big research question is, how much does Reynolds number correlate to turbulence intensity and turbulent length scales for an airfoil. And that's something I still have to develop a little bit more. So after this, I did a little bit of CFD parameterization studies with different length scales, um, all around one meter, two meters, and five meters, comparing that the entire airfoil is one meter length for different turbulence intensities. So that's the drag and that's the lift at all at eight angle six to I can't, at eight degrees angle of attack which is around the region where I was mostly interested in uh, comparing this to the literature I would have expected to get a much larger influence of the length scales and the turbulence intensities which really did happen I mean from five to twenty percent turbulence intensity which is most site values you are getting an increase, but there is a much bigger dependency, especially around higher uh, turbulence intensity values, on your length scales. And length scales tend to really dominate uh, the further on you go in turbulence intensity. For my future work, the stuff that I'm doing right now is working with the entire blade, because turbulence is an inherently 3D phenomenon. You have to see the separation point and all on the entire blade, and you also have to, I have to begin to see the loadings. These, this is actually a loading uh, sort of study I've been doing on a 63XX blade. I'm now going to move into experimental validation and finally see how the waves are interacting with the current for an actual air profile and see the, and I'm beginning to look at the 
at the entire rotor and how it's affecting the flow in the wake. Uh, any questions? This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.